My name is JC McCauley. I'm Naisha McCauley, and, and you're, you're watching, watching AccessTV.org. Voices, our, our first annual listening tour. Usually, we meet with the candidates uh, privately, um, but given how high the stakes are, we thought we would open that up and to let everyone hear what we hear from the candidates. So, we're so happy to see you all here. We're new to Blue Hills and we're excited about being here. We have so many different candidates um, in this community, and we're looking forward to doing some fantastic work. We've already in one year have had several events, so this is one of many, many more to come. And without further ado, so I do want to acknowledge the voices. We have Tracy, Carla, Andrea, Maria, and all you ladies. Thank you for being your fantastic selves. As Stephanie's here, and I'm sure some more be late. We have Rhonda, who is our, Maria is back there. Rhonda, who's from the Hartford CERT. We have all our elected officials, a lot of our elected officials, city treasurer, councilwoman, board of ed, Gwendolyn, I want to thank you all. Steve Harris, you've always supported us from 5th District Town Committee. We love you. Everybody, thank you. Sean, Adam, and without further, Miss Mama Cynthia Cynthia. <laughs> <laughs> like right here, all we see it. Y'all know we love you. Yes. And so without further ado, we will have the mayor for Bridgeport, who is also a gubernatorial candidate, Mr. Joe oh, Ganim. Come on you. up. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. The voices for everyone that's in elected officials. I don't know which way to stand. I don't want to give anybody my back. Um, but let me, let, me, let me try this. The chairman just walked in. Um, I was going to start just start by saying thank you to everyone. And before I go uh, too much, um, and, and maybe at the end open up some questions, I want to introduce a couple people who did come up from Bridgeport. So there's there's three or four of us here. Actually, we all work together, and nobody's here because they have to be here, I don't think, unless you think you have to. You let me know. But um, I'm really lucky. That's the right answer. I'm just, so I can, you know, we can joke like that, but I really, I'm, I'm, I'm not just pleased, but in many ways blessed uh, with a lot of things as people are, but I got people that said, we want to come to Hartford with you, Joe. We want to we wanna help, and they all represent, I was just thinking that we're standing here, um, things that are happening in Bridgeport that may or may not be relevant, but I think they are. Um, for instance, uh, Jenny Ray, you know Jenny, I don't know if you know Jenny Ray, but um, she's uh, a wonderful person. She's been, I don't think I can actually take the, take the credit for hiring you, can I, Jenny? Yeah. I did hire you? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but she heads, uh, she helps run the Economic Development Department, Community Development Block Grant, and, and all, a lot of the stuff that really makes a difference, and it's helped clean up messes that we came into. Uh, recently, and has it made it a much more effective program. We all know how those programs work. If you don't have good people running them, uh, money doesn't get to where it needs to be, and then you don't have an impact in, in your city and your neighborhoods. And she does a, a phenomenal job. And she's also, by the way, if you don't mind me going on a little bit more, she's also, uh, are you president of Waterbury NAACP? First vice president. First vice president of Waterbury, uh, and is on the town committee there as well. And so she's been kind enough to. Uh, allow me to make some inroads into Waterbury, of course, which is important for anybody as well. And it's been a great experience and I appreciate it. She opened her home similarly and we had a good crowd there and we talked a little bit and I think we, we built some bridges with people and made some good connections as well. Tom Coble standing there, uh, it looks like he should be uh, running for top office there, <laughs> dressed up. I feel like I'm underdressed. But, um, you know, Tom and I, um, I guess way back when, when I was pretty young, uh, in the early 90s and needed to, to reach out and I thought I could be mayor of Bridgeport at that time when it was teetering on bankruptcy. Tom stepped up, we created a friendship and a relationship. Um, on a political note and then on a governmental note, he is, he's like a train, you get him going in the right direction. We needed to go and get 5,000 signatures in about three days when I was running the primary. And Tom headed that up, brought him back in, 
done deal. Took over uh, trying to reorganize and, and clean up some of our tougher neighborhoods, knocking down what needs to be knocked down, setting up for economic development on, um, in, in different um, parts of the city. And it's just, I think, demonstrated some of the most physical, visible results that Bridgeport's seen in a long time, Tom. So, uh, you know, um, and appreciate his hard work. And uh, he, he's a force to be reckoned with in Bridgeport. And hopefully he can, his relationships here and, and, and around are in common with, with some of the challenges and some of the successes uh, you have in Hartford and we have in other cities. Fred G, uh, I respect, uh, respectfully refer to him because he is a man of cloth. Uh, he's, um, he's a pastor and I didn't realize uh, the power of his, uh, of his voice until I heard him speak. I had that pleasure at, um, at, a, at a ceremony. And, um, say something for us. So. Well, he can, he can do that. <laughs> Before it's over, he'll lead us in a prayer too, all right? It's all good. It's all good. But um, Fred also uh, heads up. Uh, I don't know exactly how, we're, we're, but uh, gave great presentation with small business and minority hirings in the city of Bridgeport, and he's taken the office. I can tell you, inside baseball, Bridgeport, when we had a transition from the last administration. It was a Democratic mayor. We challenged and we wanted all that kind of stuff, and a lot of people were, you know, in the cities, you know, you get a lot of overlap. They wiped clean our, our, our hard drives. They shredded all the files. You had to take over from scratch. So we had no metrics on what was being done, what wasn't being done in the neighborhoods. And he gave a, a you gave very, uh, and I didn't get a chance to compliment you in our department that meeting, just a very comprehensive uh, dissertation, frankly, about what's going on in the city and how we're trying to meet the needs and trying to do better um, in the areas of hiring. So Fred, we appreciate it, and thanks for coming as well. He's been a, a jumped on board, and we've been going around the state a little bit too. In the back there, uh, the guy with the beard, uh, I'm not sure his ethnicity because he speaks about four different languages. <laughs> claims to be claims to be Jewish, but he speaks better Arabic than I do, and he's got all these different well, languages. He said going he's on. Puerto Rican, I he's think. Puerto <laughs> <laughs> In the right circles, let me tell you something. He worked for the Secretary of State's office for a while. We snatched him up during the campaign, Av Harris, and uh, he's uh, been up. At, if anybody's been up at Hartford, you've seen him up there. He's done. Uh, a, I like to say damage control, but quality control in, in, in this last session um, in trying to keep uh, and working with our legislative delegation. So, and some of them uh, give shout outs. They wanted to come, Ezekiel Santiago, for anybody who knows a representative of Bristol was going to come up and couldn't make it. I know there's, there's, there's a lot of friends that I don't know about uh, between our cities, and um, I want to build on those as, as we do. So, that's my, my, my kind of long way around, but I think it's important because um, we want to come up. And as much as I want to come up here as a, as a, as a person, as, as, as Bridgeport's mayor, as, as one who's exploring, running for uh, governor, um, I want to build bridges between our cities. And I think it, at bottom, if we accomplish nothing else in this next, whatever it is, next uh, period of time, this next year, if we do that, if we are able to, to, to understand the commonalities and the challenges that we have in this neighborhood, in Bridgeport's neighborhood, in our, in, in our capital city, in our largest city, and that includes New Haven and Waterbury and all, all the other cities. And I don't mean any disrespect to the, to, to, I call them the rich suburbs, because I grew up half my life in one of them. Um, but if we do that, and if we can get a better awareness and an agenda that makes the quality of life in the cities, where we have the people that are most vulnerable and have the greatest needs, if we can just elevate that up a little bit, um, we're gonna, we've accomplished something. And by the way, that's not the agenda. That's, not, that's, that's the beginning of the agenda. That's not, that's not the end game. Um, and this whole thing about, for me, anyways, and, and I probably should take a couple extra minutes telling you a little bit about me, um, wanting to do this has, has nothing to do with not wanting to continue on and, and, and be a mayor. Uh, because I love the job I do. And I, 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 this is really where, where I get energized um, when I either wake up late at night with a good idea or, or can't go to sleep. It's because of, because of the challenges and, and maybe the, the desire to, to, to create more successes as mayor in, in the city. And, um, you know, I use this example and I can do it. I use this other town that I live, lived in called Easton, Connecticut. It's a small town. It's about 5,000 people. They know it's got three acre, we call it three acre discriminatory zoning because if you, don't, if you can't buy up three acres, you can't live there. And, um, you know, it's got regional schools and all that. Um, and, 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 and I say it to even the other towns. They don't need anything in Easton, Connecticut. And, and frankly, if you're going to govern, 
um, uh, in the segue to why I set my priorities this way. If you're going to govern, I think, effectively and make a difference for Connecticut, I like to say to Easton, all they care about is don't mess with my ECS money um, and, 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 and leave, my, leave my town alone. They don't have the challenges, whether they're financial or otherwise, that we have in our, in our multicultural, uh, largely populated um, uh, urban centers that have to rely on prop the overburdening of, of high property taxes, uh, not just to fund local government but public education, when half or more of the property is tax exempt. They just want you, so you kind of leave them alone. But at the same time, a policy should be, um, I think, if we're going to move Connecticut, I like to say it this way, if we're going to move Connecticut forward, it starts to move in our, our cities forward. Now, I've been mayor of Bridgeport again um, for almost two years. And I came back in, um, in, in, in what's been framed in some ways as a, as a comeback campaign. Um, I was mayor in, from the early 90s for uh, almost 12 years. I took a city. Our city was, my predecessor had actually filed for bankruptcy. And I understand the 10 new issues that Hartford's dealing with on, on that and the you know, challenges the mayor's trying to sort through and the council and everybody. Um, but I took it over when it was bankrupt. It actually had been the largest municipality in the country ever filed. So I had this, uh, I had a financial review board and it was not a friendly board. And we had a projected multi-million dollars, I'll spare you the details. Um, and I had, a, I, had a, I had to take the city and basically get people who were at odds in it and fighting with each other to work together. And um, fast forward through that, um, you know, we had crime spiraling out of control. Our police manning levels were at the lowest they had been. Businesses were leaving. Um, garbage was starting to pile up in the neighborhoods and, and so on. Fast forward with people working together and, you know, I could tell you I was mayor so I should get credit, but I was a piece of it. Um, but if I take credit for anything, it's for getting people that weren't working together around the table to get things done. And I can only tell you what the results were, um, and these are, you know, the objective results where we were able to balance the budget, pull it out of bankruptcy, balance the next 10 budgets without raising taxes, put on 100 more police officers, reinstituted community policing, and then started development along not only Bridgeport's waterfront, but built a ballpark like you have in Hartford now, beautiful ballpark, built an arena, 10,000 seat arena, um, and we did beautification projects and, uh, and, and job creation and, and um, began to move the city uh, in, in a great direction. We started doing that again recently in the last couple of years with the help from some of the people that are here and others that are not. And um, now we're converting that ballpark into an outdoor amphitheater with Live Nation coming in. We have a large downtown project, one, one building, uh, we're going to recapture our theaters and build two of the new tallest buildings in Bridgeport, so we're building a new skyline, $400 million in investment. Uh, we have a new $550 million uh, energy plant coming in. It's going to take down uh, the last coal-burning plant for anybody that's environmentally conscious, the last coal-burning plant in the state of Connecticut. And if you're as old as me, you go back to the sooty six and the filthy five and all that. Now we've got the, the last one, and that will make way for even more waterfront development next to where uh, Bass Pro is and, and some other stuff's going on. And we'll, we'll leave the discussion of casinos for another day because it's just one of those things that's out there. But... They want to, MGM did come to Bridgeport, they did raise their hand, and they said we want to spend $675 million in Bridgeport, Mayor, and um, we'd like you to help us make this happen. And um, so, so we've got some things going. We've got our challenges as well. There's no way these cities, uh, any of our cities, are going to sidestep uh, the constant day-to-day -day challenges. You know, it's work in progress. But we're making, I think we're making life better in Bridgeport, uh, objectively, uh, for, for maybe not for everybody, everybody, but as many as we can every day a little bit better. And, um, and I feel that, and, and I've shared this, and, and, and we've had some, some pretty detailed and tender conversations in Bridgeport. Um, the, the, the next way, and the only way, having done 12 years before as mayor, to move the city to the next, our cities, let's say, collective, to the next level, comes from the state. There's only so much you're going to do. You're going to knock around the edges of holding down property taxes, but, uh, of, 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 of building up. But unless you have the strength and, and the wherewithal and the, and, and the real focus, I believe, anyways, um, in addition to the leadership on a local level, at a state level, and certainly whatever we get from federal, you're not going to make that quantum leap. I've been, I've been there for 10, 12 years, and, 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 and people will tell you, I, you know, I was, no, I was no throwaway. I knew what I was doing. And I need to just stop for a second and, and just not miss this part. Because you know I, didn't, I, I resigned from office, I left office, um, and uh, took, you know, gave up a large part of my life because of mistakes I made. And um, you know, part of coming back 
It wasn't this whole thing of, you know, can I win like a political competition. There was, there was a lot that went into the analysis of one, did I even want to think about doing that again, coming back after being away for years, young kids growing up um, now and spending time with my family, or do you want to, you know, try and go make a commitment? Part of, part of coming back and trying to put pieces together, you know, following family and, and, and those pieces was um, trying to, to, to um, fix if, 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 the, if, if some of the good things I did had, had a good impact, then the bad things I did had a bad impact. And I thought maybe, maybe if I was strong enough and if I was ready, that I could try and put those pieces and make it, fix those pieces too. And so that's been part of the challenge of coming back. And people, you need to know, and I've seen this not just in our cities, because people say, oh, yeah, you could run for, you could run again, Gannon, with a felony conviction in Bridgeport. You know, that, that, that's okay. You know, you can walk in the neighborhoods and people, People connect with you, you know, and all that. But in the white suburbs, they're not going to, you know, you're going to get a little bit of pushback. And that may be some places, but we've been around the state quite a bit. And in Bridgeport, it was very simple. And Tom knows he was, we were door to door together. Some, in the old days, we used to walk door to door. This last campaign, we literally would run from door to door because we were playing catch up. <laughs> He'd go to the next one, we'd run up, shake hands. And I, but I would stop because I want to look people in the eye and I wanted to say to them, look, you know, either they were with me already, they'd give you, you're okay, we got you, because, you know, we know what you did, or whatever, we don't care, we, f you know, we forgive you for your mistakes. But some people, you ask, ask them, look, I'd really like a second chance. And so I had to make that personal connection with thousands of people and um, be able to just walk up. And, and, and if they wanted to dig into you a little bit, you had to give them a little peace. You had to let them, you know, give them, and then, and, and so there was some of that. So this campaign, for statewide office, and I know it's an exploratory stage, and there's legal things on what you can say about making a formal announcement and when you should do it and all that kind of stuff. It, it's not so much about that. It's about being able to, certainly part of the story is going to be, and, and, and I want to take shots about somebody coming back, and can you come back beyond Bridgeport? Can you, can you come back beyond, uh, and can you connect with people? And I was in one of the um, suburbs upstate, and I, you know, I gave, I talked about what we've done in Bridgeport, and you know, I took credit for the good things, and I took my hits and said, look, I made my serious mistakes, and I came back, and talked about, and when I talked about, you know, having been, uh, been through what I did with a felony conviction, I expect somebody to kind of like walk out of the room or something, because you don't know, you know, you know, how people are going to react, like, oh, you think you can run for office again? You don't, you know, that's not, that's not right. And a lady came up to me. White lady, uh, school teacher, sixth grade, and I used this example a few times because it resonated with me. And she pulled me aside afterwards and she said, um, you know, um, I teach sixth grade and I always tell my students at that age when they make mistakes and get knocked down, they need to have the courage to come back. No matter what it takes, look people in the face, understand that, you know what, you're not the only one that's ever made a mistake. It's not going to be your first, not make life. How big it is or how small it is. Recognize it, get it straight, and, and move on. She said, I'd like you to, you know, it's inspiring and I'd like you to talk to uh, I'd like you to come and talk in my sixth grade class. I'm thinking, <laughs> this is not the place I expected to see a receptive, sympathetic person, I, political person who would step up. I, I, fi I figured it was one of those communities we're going to have to kind of fight through. And so, so I, I make that point because those that say that, um, we're, uh, that there's a big divide in a lot of ways between our cities, uh, or people that, that, that populate our cities, let's say, and some of the kind of suburbs that, you know, I've kind of demonstrated, you know, see, so there's a lot of commonality in human <coughs> nature and in people. And I think when, when, when so when, when we get to that issue, I think it's going to be about something, it's going to be about a lot more than that. It's going to be about an agenda for Connecticut, collectively for Connecticut, and I'm going to be clear about my priorities, like I'm talking about here, because I think it's the right thing to move Connecticut forward. Um, it's going to be about experience, someone who, you know, if you can, if you can fight through and take on a bankrupt city, balance those budgets, um, and, and make demonstrative and objective progress in a tough place, pick your city, you can be Bridgeport, you can be Hartford, you can be Water, and, and do it consistently. And then you tell people, hey, wait a minute, I don't have all the answers to Hartford. I don't know why uh, revenues and, and expenditures are off by $2 billion a year, uh, but I think I know how to tackle the same type of issues in a large budget on a local, on a local level with, with results, um, they say that's what we need. We need, some, we need people with experience up there because it's no, it's no joke, it's no game. People are getting hurt right now. And, I, and this, is not, this is not a um, 
a, a statement against or, or uh, anybody in office right now. Hold that. I'm not saying he did a bad job or she did a bad job. I laud our legislators because I think they had a tough, difficult situation. But the results are, I will tell you, the people that I serve right now in my present position were getting hurt. The results are not good. Whether you're, if you're, if you're trying to uh, dispense uh, uh, some level of, 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 uh, of, of, of something to someone through a social program, um, if you're trying to, to meet the needs of services, um, the money's just not there and some of those programs are gone. Whether it's trying to connect the community and law enforcement to make our neighborhood safer. I mean, I don't know how you feel about things like Project Longevity and things like that. But those projects, up until recently, some of those were zeroed out. And we're trying to circle the wagons, just trying to hold, just trying to hold things together. Um, things are going on. And find money to fund more, uh, more stuff. So, so it's about experience um, in many ways. And, and I like to say, um, and I don't say this bashfully, I think the cities can be, if we understand the dynamics of, of our cities being more for the centers where we create jobs, where we attract and, and, and build on the growth for, for culture, um, should be the engines that drive uh, what I call Connecticut or the new Connecticut economy. And that just doesn't benefit the cities. It benefits not, not just the ring suburbs. I believe it benefits all of our cities and towns. And it begins to focus where uh, we're not sitting there calling, you know, chasing down the state for, 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 for our share of revenue, but we're self-sustaining and we're, we're the places, you know, where we're even at a, at a greater rate. And I know there's some positive things happening in Hartford as they are in Bridgeport, where more people want to move down into the cities because of, because of all that we have to offer. So I know it sounds like I'm, I'm, I'm they say singing to the choir because we're, you know, we're in a city. But that's where I come from, and that's what this, this in large part will be about. I do have an agenda that I think will, will make Connecticut a better place. I do think it centers in large part on our population centers. Uh, I do think it's going to be building on some of the hard work, challenges, and I like to think some of the progress we've made in my city and do it in partnership. So now, now before I take some, some questions, a lot of stuff I didn't cover because I don't want to go on for too long. I do want to just talk two minutes of politics, if you don't mind. Is that okay? You all right with that? All right. <laughs> this is going to be, for anybody, if, you, if you're a Democrat, talk kind of the Democrats in the room, if there's any Democrats here. If Republicans, <laughs> close your ears or join us. We don't care, right? We're going to need you at the end. Um, you know, there's a, there's a piece of this that, that really, um, the state of where we are as a party right now, I think, um, you know, nationally since Trump took over the White House, it's kind of put us on our heels. We know that. Um, I do believe, and I went around the state a lot, I do think we made some incremen incremental gains in these last municipal elections, I think as Democrats. Um, I think we saw people get involved, people decided they were going to run for office, they weren't running before. Young people, uh, new people, newbies. I, I saw it in these towns, I'm going to run, what are you going to run for? I'm going to run for a board of tax assessment. I'm going to run for, but they told me to run for board of ed, okay, I'm going to run for board. And, and, and I think the numbers show that we got, you know, we made some gains. People are getting it, people get energized. Uh, people aren't just saying uh, two weeks after uh, we lost the White House, we're going to march and then go home. You know, people are, people are staying. So I think that's kind of a positive. But it's not going to continue, and we're not going to be successful in this next round unless we continue to build on that momentum. I don't think it was, a, frankly, and again, we're talking. I know he's got the camera on. I don't think it was enough. I think we need, we need to pick it up. I think we need to accelerate it. I think we need to focus, and we need to push it, especially in Connecticut right now. And I think we got our, we're on our heels as Democrats because of where we are with this budget and in the popularity of, of our incumbent governor. And again, this isn't to say, you know, get into blame games. I don't care about that. I want to take it from here. I don't want to move it forward. And I want to have a Democratic governor. And I want to have a Democratic Senate. And I want to have a Democratic House. And that's not just because I'm thinking about running and because I want to be that person because I think I'm the best. You can clap for that. It's okay. But, you know, on the, on, on the back end of that, like a lot of us here, if you're trying to hold down the fort as an elected official or as a community leader or, or, or someone, you know, running a constituency out of interest groups, you know what's going to happen if it goes the other way. As bad as it is now, as hurting as it feels now like we got slapped around, if those R's get in, and I know a lot of them, a lot of them are small town mayors from around me, you know, and they're, some are walking around pretty cocky, Tommy knows, right? You know, um, they, they're smelling it. They're, they're fundraising went like this, okay? Because uh, the R's think that they're going to run this thing, and, and, and I think they think they're going to tip the House and the Senate, and they're not, you know, they may not be wrong. And um, we got to get our act together. And so I say that the numbers tell me uh, that we do this in large part, we lead with our cities. 
city's got to lead. We can't be the low. We can't be the low percentages coming out on election day. We got to get energized. We got to look at this thing and say we can own this thing. We can make it work. There's a lot of Democrats all over Connecticut, but if we look at the numbers, and I know the chairman's here, and you got a great chairman. Um, what's that? He's in bed. Okay. Um, you know, put put it together, and, and, and we get it going. It makes a difference. In the last two gubernatorial elections, last two, and, and you can say what you want, and this is this is more flattering than, than unflattering. We had a good candidate, you know, Dan Malloy. You remember, he was the mayor of a big city, right? Good-looking guy, tall, speaks well, smart, and all that, right? No, I'm, and I'm, I mean this sincerely. Just as a candidate, whether you like his policies, you don't. Good, you know, and we only won, if you think about it, against a not too good Republican candidate. At, at 805 on election night, they were running to the cities counting votes, right, to see if we're going to put this thing over. We're going to win by 5,000 votes, 7,000 votes, 12,000 votes statewide. Think about that, okay? So, so that that's like what, and, and again, we didn't have a terrible. It's not like we had. Oh my God, we got the worst candidate in the world. We may not be happy now, you know, popular. Or not. Forget about. It. I'm saying that this thing it, it, it can be, and in large part is dependent on urban votes, maybe not exclusively. And as a party, if we put ourselves together, which is part of my agenda, um, and, and I've reached out to your chairman too, and my chairman and others, the cities are the power bases, if you will, I don't mean that in any like arrogant way, but I mean because if we're together, we can be the strength, it should be the strength of what happens in the, with the Democratic Party in Connecticut. Um, this, you know, we have great state party leadership and all that kind of stuff. But at the end of the day, it's in your neighborhoods, in your districts, in your wards, in, your, your, in, in ours, that we, 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 we make the difference. We, we, understand, we get people to understand why they support from the come out and we can make a difference. That's, that's the partnership I want to have. And if you talk to people in the other cities, I spent a lot of time in New Haven, started uh, working in Waterbury, um, and I uh, want to go around the state, all over, certainly the smallest towns, I'll go to the Eastern Connecticut's and all that, and I'll go to Greenwich and I'll talk to the people in Greenwich and all that kind of stuff, and, and I want their support, we want their support, we, get, we have to. But at the end of the day, if we want to lead from our urban centers lead and we get together, uh, we can have an impact not only in how this, how this Democratic primary <laughs> works, which is an important thing, I think the Democratic ticket's got to be important, it's got to be a geographically balanced and ethnically balanced, so that everybody feels they're a part of it, and everybody is a part of it. Part of it, and and we're talking. You know, it, it, if we don't have that, we're going to turn around and we're going to start stumbling over ourselves. And the Republicans will just walk in, and that's death for me in my city. And I'm sure it's got to be pretty close to, you know, the same feelings for for, for other urban centers because they they're going to run to try and run this thing a different way. So I'm going to stop stop there. I left a lot out, but I tried to cover a lot and just just I wanted to connect with you a little bit about what, what really drives me. Um, what these guys will tell you if they talk, and I think it's, you know, Tom Cole, let's say anything about him. What you will find is, uh, at least I like to pride myself on this, nobody's going to work harder than me. Uh, nobody's going to be in more places. Nobody's going to take time to talk to, to people that, 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 that maybe somebody else won't talk to. Uh, I, if you'll invite me, and even if you, you know, I want to be in your neighborhoods. I want to be in those places where, where you've got to answer to people. That's that's where I connect with people. That's what I want to do. I want to understand what's going on so that when I walk away, I get a visual and I got a, I got a footnote in my brain as to, to things that I want to add to my, to my mind, to my agenda, um, as, as to what I want to not just talk about, but hopefully make an impact and do um, if, I get, if I'm lucky enough to get in that position. So um, I want to say thank you. Where would you go? Host, host yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to shut up for a minute, see if anybody wants to ask any questions, if you want to have somebody else speak. Oh, no. So we're going to open up the floor and take questions. Who, Teresa, you want to catch people's hands around you as they raise them? Okay. I see Sharon. Uh, Sharon I
My name is Jay Stam Crawley, and uh, I do business as Light Source Productions. I provide professional services in the area of strategic video communications. Uh, first, what we do is we help you craft your message uh, using what I call the rule of the five W's, who, what, when, where, and why. We do event documentation, uh, content acquisition, full-scale productions, um, editing, and of course, distribution uh, through our social media television network. And with social media, uh, video is more important now than it has ever been. Uh, whether you're talking big business, small business, nonprofit, church, or just an individual. Uh, let's say you, you know you you plan uh, uh, you're planning an event, a wedding, whatever the case may be. But but let's say a big event, uh, but no video. And you spend all this time, all these hours, uh, to put this event on, and maybe a hundred, two hundred people attend the event. But more important than that is that thousands could attend by watching it on social media. But of course, you don't think about this until after the event is over. You can't afford not to capture it for social media. And despite what people think, I am affordable. Give me a call. Let's plan your next video project and share it with the world on my social media television network. I promise you that you will have the attention of one person, me.